Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, May 19th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. Red flag warnings for most of the Southwest as winds are expected to be quite gusty. Las Vegas, 75 miles per hour. San Fran, 50. Already gusting to 50 tonight. But the big story, late May snow and chilly conditions will prevail across parts of the West. Keep calm. It's boom time. Forecast morning lows for Thursday are looking chilly in Seattle, 44. Medford, Oregon, 40. Boise, Idaho, 42. Great Falls, Montana, just 36. Going to 29 on Friday. Chilly out there, folks. As we enter summer, rain and snow forecast through Sunday. Take a look at the totals. One to two feet up here. Just east or just west of Great Falls. Holy macaroni. Wind forecast is looking brutal as well. May winter storm to dump feet of snow on Big Sky Country. Montana, Northern Rockies will see snow. Ho, ho, ho. Winter storm watches in mid May. Yes. A long duration storm could rank the top 10 greatest snowfall impacts for Big Sky Country, AccuWeather forecasts say. Giant May so snowstorm to unload feet of snow in Montana. There are winter storm watches in May. Hey, hey. THQ reported Tuesday that snowfall of 6 to 14 inches is expected for Glacier National Park, the Rocky Mountains, and Browning to Chateau in western Montana. We're not making this up. We're reporting on it. And we predicted it. Montana spring storm produces heavy snow and severe storms. Yes, winter storm warning has been issued for the East Glacier area and the Rocky Mountain front. A winter weather advisory has been issued for areas of central and western Montana. This does not include the Helena, Helena Valley at this time. Heavy snow possibly creating power outages, a soaking rain, masking for significant drought relief. Severe thunderstorms with large hail and damaging winds and cold temperatures impacting plants and livestock all on the ticket. And we're going to get to the forecast in just a second. But what's happening in the southeast is a deluge. And this is a nightmare. The fourth extreme weather event within a year wears on residents. Wait till you hear. Oh, let's get this out here. Wait till you hear some of these rainfall totals. They're absolutely splendiferous. Lake Charles Regional Airport recorded 12.49 inches of rainfall on Monday, surpassing the last daily record of three inches by 10 inches, set back in 1914. The average amount of rainfall at the airport during the entire month of May is five inches, and they received 12.5 in a day. At least four fatalities have been attributed to this storm as of Wednesday, according to the Louisiana Department of Health. A nightmare is how Lake Charles residents Alexa Wilson described the scene from her front door Monday after floodwaters from the overwhelmed contraband bayou rose to the front steps of her home, breached her garage. Her two cars were both damaged and marked as a total loss. Take a look at these totals. Pre in Louisiana, 17.69 inches. Finette, Texas, 16 inches. Lake Charles, Louisiana, 15.07 inches. Westlake, Louisiana, 14.03 inches. Ganado, Texas, 13.69 inches. If you watched my live stream earlier today on Magnetic Reversal News at 10.30 uh, a.m., we were discussing this, how increased cosmic rays cause cloud nucleation, and we should expect epic amounts of rain dumping from the skies at, as we go on into time in the future forever. For decades to come. And here we are proving our point wholeheartedly with an exclamation point. Flooding threats in the south, severe thunderstorms in the plains, critical fire weather in the southwest. That's your forecast. Heavy rain across the Gulf Coast of Texas and Louisiana will continue to result in significant flood risks into the weekend. Severe thunderstorms with large hail, wind damage will be possible. Thursday across parts of the northern high plains. Elevated to critical fire weather conditions are expected to shift from the southern Great Basin Thursday into the Four Corners this weekend. And we are looking at a hellstorm. 
Snowfall analysis from the last 24 hours. A little bit of snow in Colorado. Picking it up right here in the Southern Mountains. Beautiful. As well as across the San Luis Valley here. Take a look. And some heavy snow moving into the uh, Cascades up in Washington as well. Holy hell. And we will be seeing those snowfall totals picking up tomorrow. Here is the forecast. And let's walk it through. It's looking deep. Deep, dippity deep. Here's your Wednesday not much left of it. Thursday morning, that snow is going to start moving into Montana and really target the, the high country there. So by midday Thursday, you're already looking at 16 inches of snow or more across a wide swath and then 6 to 10 inches along across a huge area. Southern Oregon also picking up some snow as well as uh, upstate Washington State. By Friday, the snow moves into the northern Sierras. Most of Nevada is going to be picking up some type of precipitation and snow as the snow moves across Canada here. Heavy snow in the, uh, some provinces of the prairies and several feet in the high country. And we're going to have a secondary event here this weekend as well in the southern mountains. So good news for precipitation in the region. But here is what we should draw your attention to. Another massive storm predicted for the first week of June to hit Wyoming. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Sign of the times. Seismic update, no quakes of note, scary 3.0 in Lincoln, Montana, I'm sure, knocking the socks off of all of the fear mongers with uh, Yellowstone there. But as we had said earlier on the live stream at Magnetic Reversal News this morning, these deep 600-kilometer blot echoes inland here in South America, this one especially, very telling especially after 6.7 off the triple junction here. So we could be setting ourselves up in the next 24 hours for a large earthquake in South America. Eyes to the sky. Stromboli volcano. Unusual eruption or landslide trigger large ash plume about 36 hours ago. It was spectacular. A significant event just occurred at Stromboli. Friends of ours on the island just alerted of a huge ash plume seen rising from the area of the Sierra del Fuoco. Fuoco. What are you talking about? Well, as we can see here, May 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. On the 15th, the uptick at Stromboli went to, to high, level high. It might be moving up to very high in the near future because this activity has been ongoing since we started reporting on it and is upticking. Parts of the northeastern crater rim have collapsed today in a spectacular fashion. We have video, so stick with us. Stromboli volcano, new lava flow on Sierra del Fuoco. Focal, for Yuko. Yeah, we all know where Fauci can go. Following significant pyroclastic flow, this is a huge, fast-moving, hot ash landslide of death moving down towards the ocean. Gorgeous. And let's check out the video and enjoy it. In Italia. Heavy breathing and all. Holy macadole. Smoke the bolle. Mishinimu. I come on all of Questa è la lava che c'è nu a mare. Meno male che ho vento a tirare per tu. Oh, qui, tutto a posto, lì a Stromboli. Eh?
somehow I don't think that's funny, but amazing footage nonetheless from Phobos Planet. Please give him a thumbs up and check out the video. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Sangay and Sabankaya. Sabankaya Volcano is puffing and passing the 24,000 feet. Abiko as well, eruption to flight level 140, which is 14,000 feet. We also have Pacaya, Fuego, Semaru, Raventador, and more. And let's just talk about Mayan volcano activity update. Situation is unchanged there. The volcano's activity remains stable, but above background levels. Tal in Luzon in the Philippines. Unrest continues with more than 100 volcanic quakes. The volcano remains very restless. Seismic and gas emissions activity continue to be elevated, indicating that magma is moving and accumulating underneath the surface and might cause new eruptions at any time. Stromboli, we already talked about it. Parts of the northeast crater rim collapsed in spectacular fashion that you witnessed from the other side. Now, update on the eruption at Fagratosfall. The volcano continues its effusive fissure eruption in ever spectacular fashion with lava fountaining to three to 500 meters. Um, an uptick of 70% or more, according to the latest news from Iceland Met Office, as far as lava output. And it is ongoing. Reykjanes Peninsula earthquakes during the last 48 hours. Let's do an analysis. Well, it is all is quiet on the western front of Iceland. Extinct fish species that existed over 420 million years ago found alive in the Indian Ocean. Well, this is not so true. The seal and kith species date back 420 million years. Hundreds of specimens have been caught since the early 1900s. And it's not at all related to the 420 million year old species uh, that they think it is. Just bad reporting and a very similar looking fish. That's about it. Discovering the Charlotte whale. This is a spectacular, splendiferous scientific expose on how high sea levels can get and cosmic catastrophe in general. The unexpected discovery of a whale skeleton hundreds of miles from the sea, more than 200 feet above sea level in 1849, is a reminder of how much sea level can change and how quickly the empire can end. So I'll leave you links below if you want to delve into the Charlotte whale discovery. Surprise, the last ice age was colder than anyone thought. We panic about the next half a degree of warming above the 1.5 we've already had since uh, the 1800s. But the depth of the ice age was savagely cold. For years, the experts told us what the Earth's temperature was then, but apparently they were wrong. And yet corals and rainforests survived, plus turtles, whales, kittens, lots of things, and all without research grants, fear-mongering, or runaway global warming. Yes, two studies have come out in the last 10 months, both showing that at its coldest point, about 25,000 years ago, during the Wisconsinian maximum, the Earth was on average six degrees cooler in Celsius than it is today. And we're going back there quickly. Like a boom. Where were we? Holy crap of only. We really got off kilter, didn't we? Jill Biden said... Vice President Camel Toe Harris should go f herself for debate attack on her husband. Well, kudos to you, Jill. Ethereum Foundation, Ether 2.0 will use 99.5%, 99.95% less energy than Ether and way less than Bitcoin. So where's your money going? I already told you I staked all my ether to Ethereum 2.0 coming at the end of the year. No fear. The market is adjusting. As soon as it settles, now is the time to get in if you want to win. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world with mind manipulation and other psyops happening all day, are you preparing? Are you planting a seed? Are you being the change you want to see? We hope so. We hope we're opening your third eye, your chakras, to the lies before your very eyes. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share this videos, the heroes, the queeros. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. 
and we'll see you again real soon. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom to knowledge. Nee, 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 nee.